All right, Linda, I guess we'll um, get started. Mm -hmm. Everyone's logged in. All right. Aloha, everyone. Mahalo for coming to our Mo'oku'au session tonight. Um, thank you for taking time out of, your, out of your day to join us. My name is Kylie Flood. I'm the librarian at Nanakuli Public Library that you see behind me here. Um, I am going to be helping to host tonight's event. Tonight, we have two very special guests that are going to talk about the resources and services that are available to you at the Hawaii State Public Library. So I'm going to keep my intro very short. Um, I just want to remind all of you to post your questions in the Q&A. If it's something that we can answer right away, we'll type a response to you. If it's something that Linda's going to answer live later, we'll let you guys know. Um, please keep kind of like comments in the chat and questions in the Q&A. We will um, remind you guys during the event through the chat if um, you tend to put questions in there instead. Let's see. Before we start, I just have to really quickly mahalo our um, support for this program. We did our first session last month. We're going to be doing one session a month for the next couple of months on um, focusing on Mo'oku Oho. And our program partners are two staff members from the UH West Oahu James and Abigail Campbell Library. One of them is logged in tonight as a guest. Um, uh, Michiko Josephs and Kavena Komeji. I just have to mahalo them really quickly because every year that Nanakuli Library does genealogy programs, they really help me out a lot to help coordinate, um, run things. We're very lucky to have Genie as support tonight um, so they could take the night off from, re <laughs> from um, going through the chat and the Q&A. Um, but before we start, I just want to let you guys know that this program started at Nanakuli Public Library. Um, Three years ago, yeah, yeah, Linda, about three years ago we started. Sounds like it, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right about then when we opened, and it has outgrown our fifty-person meeting room. Really, we used to kind of pack everyone in there, and nobody had <laughs> tables to write on. So we decided that now we're going to do this digitally, so that there's wider access for our patrons to really learn about our library resources and genealogy resources as a whole, um, either in our state or outside of our state. Um, and we are here as professional librarians helping you to uh, do your research in a more efficient way, um, let you learn about new resources. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Linda and Jeannie. They're gonna introduce themselves and get started with their presentation. I'll be back on later on to help with the questions, Q&A, all that at the end. And I hope you guys enjoy tonight's session. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Kylie. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Linda Suyoshi, and I have Jeannie Alvarado here helping Hi. me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeannie Alvarado. I'm helping out. I'm a librarian at the Hawaii Pacific section. So. Which is behind me. <laughs> 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 um, okay, yes. Uh, thank you. I'm going to start my um, presentation now. Okay, so again, my name is Linda Suyoshi. I am the section head here at the Hawaii and Pacific section with the Hawaii State Library. And um, today I wanna introduce you to some of the uh, resources that we have here um, to help you plan your visit and research strategy or try to research from home. Um, this presentation is geared towards the beginning researcher um, who wants to know what kind of types of Hawaii records are out there um, to help them. So just a little um, background um, about our library. We opened our doors to the public in, on February 1st, 1913. We're located at 478 South King Street, which is right next to Eladi Palace. And um, it's a, actually a great location. We're uh, also near the Hawaii State Archives and the Department of Health. And um, there's the Mission Houses Museum not too far away as well. Um, so there's a lot of uh, places to visit in this area. Um, our specific section, the Hawaii and Pacific section, is on the first floor of the Hawaii State Library on the Malka end. Um, so that is a new part of the library when they did that their last renovation. Um, our 
<clears throat> we were we are now we are called the Kamakawa Room. Uh, we were dedicated on October 29th, 1994. So um, we collect material all materials on the Hawaii and Pacific area, including Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and so we have books and microfilm for genealogy, and we also have some internet computers here to help you with uh, online research. So just a few um, notes first. I just want to let you guys know that genealogy is very labor intensive and we want you to try to maximize your time here because um, uh, parking can be limited and there's it's all metered parking in this area. So we recommend that you try to do as much research as home as possible before you get here. Um, and Kylie had an excellent presentation last month about right about that. So you can see it on uh, the Hawaii State Public Library System's YouTube channel. Um, also, all our librarians over here are happy to help you access the resources that you need. Um, it gets a little busy sometimes, so we might not be able to spend a lot of time with you individually, but we will try as much as possible. Um, also, it just depends on who you get at the reference desk. We might have uh, various levels of experience, but um, it's a team here, so we will all try to help you as much as possible. Uh, let's see. Uh, we also have a handy genealogy handout that uh, we have here, and as well as on our website. Uh, it lists all the things I'm going to be talking about today. So if you want to check that out, um, we have handouts at in the library, and we have an online version on our website. And again, uh, parking is limited uh, to metered street parking or metered lots. Um, sometimes we'll recommend trying the Ilani Palace parking lot or the Supreme Court side across the street. Uh, also, it gets pretty cold here. So if you're going to visit us, then I recommend bringing a jacket. And we have a, I also recommend bringing a flash drive because a lot of our um, things you can find on our databases, you can save to a flash drive or our mark, microfilm scanner, you can save it to a flash drive as well. Okay, uh, let me go over some of the, our, our setup at the library first. Now we have a bunch of equipment that you can use um, when you're here. So a lot of our um, resources are on microfilm or um, microfiche. So we have these microfilm reader printers. That's the old fashioned one over here. And we also have some newer microfilm scanners that we can help you with over here. And uh, the reader printers, there's a, it's 15 cents per printout though. Uh, the, the machines are getting a little old and um, they don't manufacture the toners for it anymore. So eventually uh, they're gonna run out of toner and we will only have these scanners left um, for those people who prefer the old fashioned way. But yeah, it's all gonna be scanners pretty soon. But the scanners are free to save to your flash drive. Um, but if you want to print, we have a 15 cent donation per page. Uh, we have computers reserved for Hawaii and Pacific research, which means the uh, Hawaii genealogy as well. Um, if you have a library card, uh, it's a 15, 60 minutes sessions and you can have up to four sessions a day. If you don't have a library card, it's okay. You can go to the checkout counter at the front of the library and ask for a guest pass and it'll give you an hour of uh, computer time. But if um, also we have a catalog computer that has access to all of our databases. I mean, you can't get on the internet to like check your email or um, or anything, but you can search our databases like um, Ancestry and Heritage Quest, and there's no time limits, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so um, after that was our setup, we can go on to our resources, and I'll start off with. Um, our databases, because that's what we kind of 
encourage people to go to if they're just starting out. The library system has a subscription to Ancestry, which you can use in the library. Um, so if you're if you come in, we can jump on one of our catalog or internet computers and start using it. You just cannot access it from home, um, like our, some other databases that we have. Uh, and, or if you log onto our Wi-Fi wi in the library, you can also access it that way. We also sub subscribe to Heritage Quest. Um, that one you can get from home with the library card. Uh, and it's just that um, it has a lot less resources. It's not as powerful as Ancestry. Mostly I, I use it for census research, um, but it's handy because you can search it from the comfort of your home. And uh, just to show you, Ancestry has a very easy to use search interface and you can also um, browse quite simply by clicking these links here, or you can go by location. And so there's multiple ways to do your research. Uh, for Heritage Quest, they have these um, uh, subjects. So you kind of have to select what you want to look at first, and then you can search it. So if you click on census, then it'll bring up the search page where you can just search the census. A couple of other resources that specifically um, the Hawaii State Public Library System has are the um, the rosters of Japanese American relocation centers. So if you know somebody who was um, in a Japanese internment camp um, during World War II, you could check that out. There's it's only the um, the mainland uh, relocation centers, but um, there's a, a a lot of information there. And we also have ProQuest where you can look at um, a limited number of old newspaper articles um, from the Honolulu Advertiser and Star Bulletin. Um, so for the Honolulu Advertiser, it only goes back to 1999 and for the Star Bulletin 1996 to, to 2010 when the two papers merged and became the Honolulu Star Advertiser, which you can see uh, is from 2010 to present. Okay, so um, I'm going to start off with the uh, records that we have here now, vital records, which everybody's looking for. Um, just to give you an idea that uh, what we have here, um, the resources that we have kind of cover pieces of time periods here and there. So. Um, this is where your prior research kind of comes in handy. If you know what time period you're going to look, you need to look at, that'll help you um, know which resource to check. So if it's uh, information that you need from between 1909 and 1949, then you know to check maybe the Department of Health um, microfilm. But I'm going to go over all of these um, records page by page. So. Starting off with the Department of Health birth, death, and marriage certificates from the, um, these are all, all on microfilm. Uh, so they're all in those cabinets that I was showing you with a picture of our section. They're open to the public. People can come in and look at them uh, on our machines. Uh, they have, we have births, uh, births that start at 1909 um, to 1948 for the index. Um, and then, the certificate images themselves for 1909 to 1921. So the index covers a wider range, but we only have the certificates for a smaller range here. So births, deaths, marriages, they go by the groom's name and the bride's last name. So there's two sets there. And then the certificates, you're gonna have to go to the index first because it's gonna give you a registration number and location. And with that information, you can go to the certificate images and look it up if it happens to fall between this time period. Um, one of the last roles that we got from the Department of Health was the 
Kalapapa patient administration cards. So we keep that one at the reference desk if you want to ask for it. Let's see. So um, just to let you give you an idea of what the certificate images look like, and what kind of information that they have. Uh, birth records, they have the parents' names, uh, they have race, birthplace, occupation even sometimes. Um, marriage certificates are great because they get the parents' names on for both sides, the groom and the bride. And of course, the death certificates, Some they have a section over here for the parents' information, but that's not always filled out. Um, and you can also get the cause of death. So if um so before the certificates, before we had certificates, there was this territory of Hawaii birth in, um ledger that covers 1896 to 1909. So we also have this behind the reference desk. It's in print format. Um it's three volumes, but they all contain the same infinite same information. Uh, it's just that. One volume will be indexed by the name of the father, one by the child, or one by the mother. And you'll see here um, that's important because sometimes the child was not named at the time of birth or the time that they uh, recorded it. So it's blank. There's a whole bunch of blanks um, for the name of the child. Or sometimes the father is unknown, so that'll be blank as well. Um, and you'll have to just search by the mother's name. Um, we have a set here, but uh, other libraries have a copy as well. So you might want to check um, if uh, you're in any of these areas, if uh, they still have their copy there. Oh, and um, these records are uh, sometimes full. Cool. This is the index is all we have. So if you wanted to look further into, if you find somebody in there and you want to look further into it, um, you can go to the Department of Health to ask for the record. Okay, so if the person you're searching for was born, is not doesn't show up in either of these indexes here, um, and maybe they were born before 1896, um, you can try the delayed birth record index um, from the also from the Department of Health. So um, this is for people who did not get a birth certificate at the time of their birth. Um, so if it was like a really long time ago before the certificate program started, um, or they were born at home and um, they didn't bother to go to the Department of Health to register the birth, then uh, they could do it later on in their life. <clears throat> and the index cover, says it covers 1859 to 1970. Um, but that's just because that's the oldest person registered in here was born in 1859 and the most recent was 1970. But the bulk of it you'll see is uh, usually in the early 1900s or late 1800s. Um, and also, and so, you know, the index itself gives you a lot of great information. Um, you get the, the person's name, maybe their married name as well. Um, their race, the parents' names, where they were born. Um, so just the index itself gives you a lot of information. It's four volume set. Uh, it just covers the entire uh, alphabet range by last name. So it's very easy to search. And if you find somebody in there, we have the delayed birth certificates themselves for only for 1904 through 1913. So if you're lucky to find somebody within that time period. We have the microfilm in our section here. Um, it's all arranged in birth date order. So um, there's a bunch of scrolling to do, but once if you do find the person, you get a certificate with the image on it um, and the testimonials that come along with it because uh, when you went to go register, then people you have to bring people to testify on your behalf that you are who you say you are. And um, they'll talk about your family, like who your parents were, where they're from, all the siblings that you have, 
sometimes you know what happened to if somebody passed away um so there's a yeah great information if you know if you don't find the person you're looking for in the index but you see a relative in there uh, i would go check it out um you can maybe they'll talk about your family as well i don't know but yeah it's a one of our um, most useful resources for genealogy Okay, so um, so some of these things are available in digital form, um, or maybe like um, other types of vital records um, are also available online. The I would recommend trying out uh, Ulukao, ulukao.org. They have um, Hawaiian genealogy. Um, oops, sorry, their own Hawaiian genealogy index that is um like the digitized I mean, it's the index from the hawaii state archives so if you find anybody in, on this index then you can go to the hawaii state archives and see if you can get the record but they are also putting a lot of the uh, records as a link through on this index so like if um they, they keep adding it so if you're lucky you might get the record right there <clears throat> As you see, they mostly have marriages, um, some divorces and probate records as well, but um, not really births. And you can go to the Hawaii State Archives website itself, and they are also digitizing um, their records. Like um, they have, uh, if you search these, this vital statistics collection, You'll see they have pretty old records on here um, and they're continuing to add to it. So it's really worth checking out. Though some of them are very old and very hard to read, but um, um, but yeah, it's like stuff that we don't have here. And also check out Ancestry, of course, because they uh, are adding Department of Health, birth, marriage, and death records slowly to their site. Like I, I've seen a lot of Department of Health records on there already. Um, and some delayed birth records, I've seen, I think it, they have um, 1903 and earlier. And um, so yeah, they're working with the archives to get a lot of more genealogy records online. So obituaries, um, these are also a great resource, a uh, source of information. And of course, it gives you a little bit of information about the person and who the surviving family members are. Um, so uh, just to, as a reminder, not everybody had an obituary published at the time of their death. Like it could be the, that the person didn't want anything published or they didn't have any family here so they wouldn't put an obituary here um so it, it does happen and um obituaries kind of change over time or a lot of times they're just like more like obituary articles um where it's an article about somebody passing away too uh, and let's see the honolulu star advertiser no longer includes um, family information in the obituaries they publish so it's uh, if you but luckily people like to submit um the family i mean the family will submit an obituary to the paper and then you'll see like the photo and all of the family information in there but the ones that the star advertiser publishes yeah it's just the person's name and where they're from and how old they were Okay, so obituaries are published in newspapers, so you generally you need to look at a, a newspaper index to find one. The um, main newspaper in Hawaii is uh, now the Honolulu Star Advertiser, but before that it was the two newspapers, the Honolulu Advertiser and the Honolulu Star Bulletin. Um, so we have an index that covers these two papers going back to 1929. Then. It's, a, it's this uh, image right here. We have a 
print set that covers 1929 to 1967 with a 68, 69 supplement. And then it goes year by year after that um, until 1994. So this one you can find in uh, most libraries. And from 1989 on, it, we had, you can search it online through our catalog. Mm, other print indexes include the index to the Maui News. So just 1900 to 1973, the Garden Island for Kauai um, and the Hawaii Island newspapers. You can see that kind of have spotty coverage, unfortunately. Besides that, we did get some micro, we do have some microfilm from the Hawaii State Archives. It's indexed to birth, uh, marriage, and death notices that appeared in Hawaii newspapers between, um, for births and marriages between 19, 1850 and 1950, and for obituaries, 1836 to 1950. Um, and that's from the archives. Online on Ulukao, again, um, they have our 1929 to 1969 index digitized and available there at this um, website. Um, and the 1989 to present newspaper index available through our catalog, like I mentioned. And also uh, we can try Chronicling America. It's a Library of Congress um, site where you can search old newspapers in the public domain, so like before 1922. Um, and they have a search box that you can search people's names and limit it to Hawaii newspapers or just search all newspapers um, if you want to. And uh, it, uh, and I found things on there though, it can be a little difficult because old newspapers are so hard to read and they're using a software to digitally read the text of the newspapers. And if it's, if the newspaper quality is not very good then it's just not gonna find it. And of course, Ancestry, um, has, you'll see obituaries come up, or at least citations for obituaries come up. I think they're using, they have um, some kind of partnership with newspapers.com. And you can always, or you can just search newspapers.com, which is an excellent site for, especially for newspapers after Chronicling America, that time period after 1922 to um, present or um, 1996, when it kind of goes online from the Star Bulletin. But uh, the only thing is they're a subscription site, so you have to pay pay a subscription uh, to use it. It's like um, if you go to the Star Advertiser website and you access it that way um, and you get the subscription for just the Hawaii newspapers, then it's like $60 a year. So here's one strategy tip. <laughs> um, in genealogy, you should really try everything. Like I, I searched for this one person, uh, say you're searching for Benny Papu. Uh, if you can see here, I tried searching Chronicling America. It says zero results found. If you, I search newspapers.com um, and it says again, did not return any matches. But I checked, uh, also check the um, archives index to obituaries between 1836 and 1950. And sure enough, he's right there. Uh, it says he's in the advertiser, 1911, May 27 on page eight. And if you take a look here, yeah, he, he is there. It's very light, but Papu Benny. And it lets you know that this person died on this date and he was 63 years old. And he, uh, he died of a heart problem. Let's see. So cemetery records, there are cemetery records you can try to. Um, and the, the um, one of the best cemetery record resources that we have um, is the Nanette Napoleon uh, directory of cemetery sites for, we have for Oahu, or they did it for Oahu, Maui, Molokai, and Lanai. 
um, this was like a project done in the quite a bit ago. They had students and volunteers go out to the cemetery sites and write down all the information that they could find um, there. So there's a, a book for that has all the names in it, like a name index book, um, a site index book where you can go site by site and just go through all the names there. And there's like maps, um, a little bit of information about the cemeteries. So um, other libraries might have copies. So you can check our catalog to see if, uh, if you're on another island, if um, a library there has a copy. But um, if you can see here, some of them will have um, inscription information, um, which is a little uh, gives a little bit of more information, or if you can, at least you can find out you know where your relative is buried and if you want to visit them. Other uh, cemetery indexes include the cemeteries of Kauai, nineteen ninety two. This one also was done by um, students and volunteers. Um, there, this is specifically just sites. It doesn't have a name index, so you're gonna have to look. If you know the cemetery, you can look at it that way. Um, and I think copies are available on Kauai libraries, some Kauai libraries, so you might wanna check. Um, check the catalog. And the other um, cemetery book that we have is uh, one for Hawaii State Cemeteries. This one is just for the four state cemeteries, Aiea, Makiki, Puea, and Ukamali. Um, it's a little more like a report. So there's a lot of um, uh, studies done. Um, it's more like a, a report that you read and it has includes a list of names and some history about the cemetery. And we have circulating copies of these if you want to request to be sent to your library. Um, so I think Kylie might have gone over these in her presentation, but uh, there are online um, sources for cemeteries as well. So there's the University of Hawaii at Manoa's uh, online Hawaii Cemetery Index, which is the, the Net Napoleon's Index, but I think they only have Oahu right now. Um, there's the Tombstone Transcription Project that has Hawaii cemeteries on there. I think it's, it's all volunteers, um, so it's kind of like a mix of things. Um, you're just gonna have to check it out to see what anybody has volunteered to do. But again, yeah, it's mostly like names from the tombstones that they've gone to the cemetery to find. Uh, and of course, um, Find a Grave is an excellent site, uh, which is also available through um, Ancestry. It'll come up as this in your hits um, when you search Ancestry. And if you're lucky, you know, it might have a picture of the tombstone for you as well. Okay, census records. So the census records are a valuable source of genealogy information. Um, they're taken every year, every 10 years, and um, they show all the members in your household and how old they are, uh, where they were born, and their race, their occupation. Because uh, Hawaii was annexed by the US in 1898, um, the earliest federal census for Hawaii is 1900. We have these old print indexes for 1900 and 1910 behind our desk um, because the old way of searching for census records was you had to find out what the uh, ED number your person lived in and then go to the microfilm and then just keep scrolling through it until you found the right uh, district and page number. And it was um, really difficult, but now that they're available on Ancestry and Heritage Quest, it's so much easier. 
Uh, so this is what the, the search page looks like for on Ancestry for their census collection. Um, you can see that you can just put in the first and last name and you don't have to fill in the rest. You can just leave it as that or you can specify um, where they were born or where they lived. And it'll give you um, a, your results list. It's um, really pretty good but um, not infallible. Sometimes they'll come across pages that look like this. So um, like uh, you can see that they've, there's tape all over the place and that's blurred out people's names. So um, if the transcriber can't read what the name is, yeah, it won't, it'll be really difficult to get it in a, a database search. Um, or let's see. Oops. Sometimes the handwriting was a little funky. So um, again, the transcriber will have a hard time reading it and will misspell your name when they put it into the database. And that's another reason why you might not find what you're looking for. Um, and if you're uh, a younger person, <laughs> you might uh, they might not have taught taught you script in school. So yeah, it's good to you can do a Google search and usually find handwriting examples. But yeah, the um, it helps to know what script looks like when you're looking at the census pages. Also, um, something to note is that uh, things changed as the census over the years for the census. So like. Um, in the 1920 census, um, you could see things like the year of immigration, um, the birthplace of your parents, but um, those eventually get got taken out. So, like this is the 1940 census, and they've you don't see the uh, immigration year anymore, and they only have the place of birth for the child. <clears throat> but um, Even if you don't have um, access to Ancestry or Heritage Quest, you can always get the 1940 and the 1950 census through the um, National Archives website. Uh, they also have the census maps, uh, though uh, Ancestry has that now as well. So, so the for the 1950 census, again, like, um, They made it available last year, so that's great. A lot of more information out there for people to research. Um, on, though they have, did take out you know, some of this information here, but they do have more information like on marriage status and um, economic information like employment. And they have this new census district finder. So if you wanna browse, they, you can search a map and click on that area and it'll give you the ED number and you can click on that and then you can browse to the pages that way. Which um, is an example um, how, of how browsing can really help. Like in my own research, um, I was able to find my family every year, except every census year, except for the 1920 census for some reason. So, if, um, like I tried all kinds of different weird spellings and no spellings, but um, it wouldn't come up. So I just had to go and browse. So if you see on the uh, Ancestry, there's this browse this collection feature. So I chose Hawaii, the county is Honolulu for Oahu. And um, Kolaupoko had the right description for where they were living, um, which was like Ka'ava. And, um, then I just brought, went page by page and finally by page 33, I saw something that looked promising and, and indeed it was, um, you can see why it didn't come up in any, any searches, it's just too faded. But if you look really carefully, you can kind of see Suyoshi. And um, I know my grandfather's first name was Neo, but they put it as his last name. Um, so they, in he, on, 
ancestry, his name is supposed to be Sugeyoshi Neo, and but then the transcriber put Sugeyoshi. Uh, and all his children have Neo as their last name. And but I know that his first two uh, children's names were Yoshiko and Shizuko. So um, again, they messed up Shiz no, Yoshiko, but I could see Shizuko there plainly. Um, so I knew that this was the right one. Um, immigration records as well. Um, we have microfilm from the Hawaii State Archives of Passenger Manifests from before 1900. Again, you can search Ancestry for this, um, which makes it a lot easier because before you had to go through these indexes on microfilm that were divided by either like by race. So like there's a Portuguese index and a Japanese one. And then that would <clears throat> lead you to the film itself for the um, passenger manifest lists. But now I can just search Ancestry. As you can see here um, that they have arriving and departing passengers, 1843, 1898, and um, 1914 to 1966. So they, they have a lot of stuff on there. Um, if you wanted to check out the Hawaii State Digital archives collection. Um, they do have uh, their passenger manifest indexes uh, on their website as well. We also have city directories here. They can be useful um, in following uh, ancestors that you just can't find any information on. Hopefully they'll show up in the city directories um, and it lets you know their occupation and where they're from. The, the old directories are can be kind of general. Um, but of course, the later ones uh, will have the street name at least. And they also let you know, uh, they'll also include if um, somebody's a widow um, and things like that, or the wife's name, the husband and wife's name. So it is, uh, it is some useful information in there. And of course, if uh, they're not in the city directory, we have old phone books as well. Uh, in print form and on microfiche. And you can access some online through um, old ones through Hathi Trust, which is a uh, site, great site for um, old digital content, I mean, old digitized books, as well as Ulukau has some of the old city directories and of course, Ancestry. Oops. And uh, we have a a large collection of yearbooks here at the Hawaiian Pacific section, which is really popular. Um, if you come to our, you have to come to our library to look at them. Um, you fill out a re yearbook request slip. You can look at five at a time. We hold on to a picture ID while you're looking at the books in our section. You can, if you want to see what we have, we do have them posted, what uh, the schools and the years um, on our website here and um, it's all donations. So it, there's gonna be pockets of here and there, but um, well, it is quite a large collection right uh, to now. So you can find pictures of your relatives um, or if they, you know, they were a teacher, they have the teacher's pictures in there too. Uh, we have copiers uh, and scanners available, but most people just take a picture with their phone. And if you're, um, if you have access to Ancestry um, and you're not able to visit us, um, there are some yearbooks for Hawaii available on Ancestry. And um, if you wanted to, if you also can't visit us, but you're interested in finding somebody in a yearbook, um, you can try our Ask a Librarian service. Uh, we also have uh, family genealogies that the people will submit to us to our, add to our collection, as well as biographical dictionaries, um, such as like men of Hawaii or Chinese of Hawaii. <clears throat> There's also Portuguese Hawaiian memories. Um, so these are all in our reference collection that you can check our catalog for and request to look at in the library if you wanted to. 
And uh, there is a multitude of other resources that I, I don't probably can't go over. Uh, we wouldn't have the time to go over all of them, but um, they are in our collection. You can borrow some of them. Some of them are only in reference, uh, but check our catalog. Um, they should fall under the subject heading Hawaii-genealogy. Um, and, uh, or you can ask at our reference desk. So um, there is a lot out there for people to go through. Mahalo to Linda and Jeannie for taking time out of their day, their work night tonight to um, be with us. Um, mahalo to Kavena and Mitch, who are always supporting me every year I do this genealogy class, even though tonight they got to take um, a leisurely break to be guests instead of um, hosts. <laughs> And mahalo to everyone that came. Um, without further ado, I want to let you guys all go. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jeannie. Thanks, yeah, Kylie. Thank so everyone have a wonderful evening. Oh, See you, Kavena. Bye, Kavena. <laughs> Bye.